Hello, this is Local Human from the uh, city of Zion, and I'm going to talk about the uh, progress of the Python compiler for the Neo blockchain. Uh, currently, they, if you want to write a smart contract for Neo, you need to do it in C Sharp or Java. And furthermore, you need to uh, load that contract in uh, the Neo GUI, which is a Windows-only application. Uh, the general goal of Neo Python is to allow the running of both the running of smart contracts and the writing and compiling and pretty much everything just in Python. So you can do it on a Unix or a, uh, or a Windows or any environment. But with that, let's get started. Uh, we'll just open up the Python shell. I use bpython since as syntax coloring and I'm going to do from boa import compiler we'll do the uh, compiling a, a smart contract file which I'll show you one let's see got a bunch of them in the tests we'll just do this wild test right here uh, this is um, a piece of code this is uh, Python, and it returns the result of this crazy while operation. Um, so let's do uh, C is equal to compiler dot load, and you just pass it in the path. Um, let's just do while test on py. There we go. Um, so when you do this, it just passes back a reference to this main module of this code. So you print out c, well, c.default is the module. Um, and then c.default dot main is the main method which is this one um, and when this is compiled down to Python to run in your Python interpreter it'll look something like this uh, c dot default dot main dot code oh, crap. there we go so this is the instruction set your your Python interpreter is actually running on. So the challenge of Neo Python compiler is to take this and run and turn it into something that the Neo VM understands, which would seem easy in theory, but it's a little more difficult in practice. Um, let's just assign this to a, a default. Now we have that method. So, args. You can check out the arguments, um, and if you want to look at what the instruction set is of what um, the VM actually uses, you can do a 2s. And this is. Um, it might look the same, but it's not. Uh, this is what the Neo VM actually consumes. Um, if you want to see the actual byte string representing this, you can do 2b uh, m that tokenizer 2b. It's going to look like that. So with that, uh, let's just demo that one more time. So, so we've got this wild test AVM, and that's the Anshares virtual machine format. We'll delete it. Um, oh, yeah. And do C dot write. And this will actually write the AVM file. So wait a second. It should show up. Maybe if we close this directory and open again. What? Oh. Let's just do. Let's do load and save. Uh, 
All right, there we go. There's your AVM file, and it looks like a string of bytes. What we're going to do now is take that into NeoPython and start up our our node. Um, this node runs its own VM. Um, and to test out a contract, we will need to open a wallet first because you need to sign your contracts. Uh, so, let's see. And we're just going to tell it to build that thing that we just So build that wild test smart contract, and we're going to tell it to test. If it doesn't take any parameters. The return type is an integer, which is also 02. And no storage is needed, and we don't need to pass it any parameters. So what that did is it saved the output to this AVM file, um, and then uh, the shell loaded it in. Uh, you can see it doesn't take any arguments. The tests deploy to the to the VM and then invokes it with these arguments. The result is 27, and it'll tell you the gas cost. Um, you can look at this file. You can say this. If you were to run this in just Python, it would spit out 27. Um, let's see here. The nice thing about having this all in one environment uh, is that you can make changes and test them really quickly. So let's just say C is 22. Um, you could do this and then load it in, but the nice thing is you can just uh, build and run and execute all in one command after you make code changes. You can see the result is 28 now. If you look in this um, BOA directory, you'll see there's a blockchain directory, and these are what have some of the more Neo-specific uh, items, such as if you want to get a, a header of a block or get a block, um, these contain some uh, helper methods for that. And you'll notice that it says pass here, and it means it's abstract or not implemented. And the reason for that is um, these methods don't actually get called in Python. These are implemented in the VM. Um, so when you call get height, um, the VM is actually returning you the the result of this method rather than this rather than this uh, method itself. Uh, and let's just demo one more blockchain specific one. So you can see we are importing you know, the get header method from blockchain and then some header specific methods. Um, and what we're also doing is importing the Neo runtime notify and log. Um, we're not using log. Uh, we're using print instead. Uh, and, but it ends up being the same thing. You can just say log and it'll do the same thing. Um, and let's just do a first, just a sample run of this through the VM. Um, uh, blockchain uh, header test.py. And so what you see here is it compiled to the header test AVM, loads it into the, um, the node. And you can see runtime.log got header, that's right here. Uh, Merkle root, get the version of the header and notify. So if you want to know what version that header is, you can see the notify integer zero right there. Um, same with the hash. Um, so down here, we're asking for the timestamp of the block. Uh, notifying that, that's right there. Then we can compare that to see if it's equal to that. Um, in this case, it's not. Uh, it's inter equal to that. 
so you can see it returned 1. And what if we change this number to what the actual timestamp of this block is? We can see if it'll result in 9, and it does. Um, one way you could um, change this is to have it pass in a parameter. So let's say block height. We don't need this guy. And so now when we build it, we're going to say that it accepts an integer, so that's 0, 2. Returns an integer, false. Um, and then let's pass in, let's see, what was that block? Let's pass in this block. So we can see it got the right block. It got this. The result is 9. Uh, let's replace in block that one. The result is 1. So that's a basic demo of the current functionality of the NeoPython compiler. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ping me on uh, Slack. Or if you have any issues, please make um, some notes on, or file, make an issue on the GitHub repo. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, I do have a full-time job, and I am really busy with the compiler, so I might not get around to everything, but I try my best. Um, I'm really excited about this project, and... Uh, uh, I'm excited to continue working on the Neo platform because it's uh, a great platform. So with that, uh, have a good evening or day or something, wherever you are. Bye.